Hello, YouTube. Today I will once again talk about Kamchatka. This place is full of paranormal phenomena, and I've been researching it for many years. And I've shared my knowledge with you in other videos through the years as well. I think you'll find them fascinating because of the subject matter. The Kamchatka Peninsula is 1,250 kilometer long peninsula in the Russian Far East with the area of about 270,000 square kilometers. The Pacific Ocean and the Sea of Ahotsk make up the peninsula's eastern and western coastlines, respectively. Immediately offshore along the Pacific coast of the peninsula runs the 10,500 meter deep Kuril Kamchatka Range, one of the places where there are unidentified submersible objects that I have been calling your and others' attention to for years. Lake Kurazhi, located between the Kamchatka River and a group of eternally erupting volcanoes, has a bad reputation. The stream flowing out of the lake is called the Cursed One, could be also translated as the Damp One. Fishermen and hunters are afraid of these places. The Russian who reported this event I'm about to tell you always thought that all these fears were just superstitions. But as it turned out, he was wrong. That's what his brother Valeri told him about an incident that happened on a winter hunting trip where he embarked to with his partner, the Kamchatka native Feaktist in a Kentievich. That winter, all the willows by the lake were completely covered with countless um, rabbit tracks, trails. When I say rabbit, I refer to the hare. While Fionia, that was the affectionate name of Feaktist, was settling into a long abandoned dugout that they found there, Valeri was running after hares with uh, a gun at the ready. Alas, Valeri did not shoot a single one because he didn't have enough experience. He decided to get, dig in by the trail until the night fall and wait for the beast to run at the hunter, so to say. Indeed, Valeri had no time to get settled when he saw two birds rushing straight at him, so he killed them one by one. What a hunt it was. At the same moment, the moon rolled out from behind a cloud, illuminating a wonderful panorama and a lot of hares. They were everywhere, on the left and on the right, and now a little white-eared one came up very close, as if from under the ground, it was busily munching on a twig. The picture was amazing. Imagine the Klyuchevsky volcano blazing with fire, the sky with billions of flashing or falling red-hot stars, and hares nearby tumbling on the lunar landscape. And he is all alone in the universe. Here and there, all their tree trunks burst from the frost. They scared Valeri frozen, and then they brought him to his senses. And Valeri ran to the rescue dugout. Fionia did a good job, and he poured strong and hot tea for them. The hunters were sitting by a red-hot stove, sharing their impressions of the day. It's quiet around, and suddenly they heard some sounds. The skis were creaking more and more clearly in the snow, Finally, someone grunted and stopped at the dugout. They heard. He patted the skis from the snow that got stuck to them and knocked. They rushed to meet the guest, opened the door, and they saw neither a man nor his skis. All around is the day, same dead silence. It all fits, it all fits, muttered the terrified Fionia. This is the worst place. 
the old people said that hunters disappeared here without a trace. So they came for them, just like summer, just like the last summer for Simeon. What Simeon was that? Calm down, Fionia. What are you really talking about? What are you doing? Fionia responded, he kept the dogs um, and the cursed one watered them and fed them. One night at midnight, the dogs barked, howled like mad, and beat against the dugout. Simeon opened the door a crack and was stunned. A man was walking along the river, looking back every minute. He walked through the water without sinking an inch into it. After telling about Simeon, Fionia fell silent. It was creepy for Valeri too, and suddenly the hunters heard footsteps approaching again. Everything was repeated to the last detail. The creaking of snow, grunting, padding on skis, and knocking on the door. Frankly, they were dumbfounded with fear, but the knocking continued. Open up, host. I have no strength. I am frozen to death. And Valeri thought he heard something familiar in the voice. There was nothing to do. He opened the door and saw his workmate, Vitka, and with a hair, I guess, with him. Um, oh, Valera, he shouted joyfully, I got lost. Some kind of force was circling me near the lake. Thank God I saw your light. I thought it was a bonfire, he chattered. What is the matter with you? You don't have a face on. The hunters told Vitya about the invisible guest. Now the three of them couldn't sleep, trying to understand what was happening. What was it? The incomprehensible displacement of actions and sounds in time? Is it really a mystery or some kind of natural anomaly? But anyway, these questions will probably remain unanswered forever. The protagonists of the story are no longer alive. The lake and the river have become shallow, but the place is still notorious among the Kamchadals, or denizens of Kamchatka. Um, few tourists ever visit the surroundings of Kurazia. It's more interesting for them to look at volcanoes. But the paranormal site in the peninsula that is full of mysteries, it may still be there. The Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia's Far East is one of the world's wildest places where researchers keep watch over active volcanoes and hunters come in search of big game. It's also a home to a secretive military facility where ballistic missile tests disturb the pristine environment and maybe they rupture natural forces too that we just don't have idea about. You know, tests of new military equipment, weapons and so forth. You cannot understand Kamchatka, its history, its people, its sense of self, without actually understanding the immense military presence on the peninsula. Because of its location on the far eastern frontier of Russia and the former Soviet Union, Kamchatka has always had immense strategic importance. For this reason, the peninsula was a closed off off limits for many decades, until the early 1990s, foreigners and even Russians, most Russians, were prohibited from visiting Kamchatka. Even today, you know, what is it, three decades after the Cold War's end, Russia continues to maintain the heavy military presence on the peninsula, and many areas of Kamchatka remain off limits, which is important for travelers to, to understand too. I'm, I'm not a travel agent, and I'm not gonna tell you what you can or cannot do, but you know, you can always think, where you look, what you do, and what questions you ask. So there are no mistakes. You see, Kamchatka is the home base of the Pacific Submarine Fleet of Russia. Kamchatka is also the site of several Air Force bases, as well as the early warning radars that would detect an American or Chinese attack on Russia. Look at my other videos if you're interested in USOs, UFOs, far remote regions, exotic in many ways like 
Kamchatka is and other parts of Russia I tell you about Chukotka, for example, Yakutia, and so forth. And um, I, I think you will like the subject matter. And if you like my research, please support me through the links you will find in the description to this video. Please like my um, videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your attention to my work.